get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Sal Orwell. He's co-founder of Examine.com. They have over 41,000 scientific research references on nutrition and supplementation. The first two years generated no revenue. And he bootstrapped Examine.com from zero to over $1 million. And Examine.com is his sixth entrepreneurial venture. And he also founded AudienceOwl.com. Sal, thanks for joining me. Uh, Thank you for having me, Jeremy. So Sal, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask, what's been the lowest point and then how you push through it? So I had a a business partner defraud me for many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wow. And uh, it, uh, yeah, it, 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 and it was, was bad. It was we'd worked together for like three or four years, but he hit me in a spot where um, I wasn't in. Uh, I was in Argentina, I think, when this happened. No, sorry, I was in, in Texas uh, when this happened, and I didn't have a chance to. Like I was kind of isolated. I couldn't go to the bank. I couldn't make it happen. So I actually had to take a, a loan shark loan uh, out of that funness. And um, oh my god. And uh, I do remember going to the grocery store and whatnot and buying things. And you know when you put in your pin and you wait for the approved or denied? Um, I was always on the cusp of being denied. Like my yeah. credit cards were maxed out. I got lucky almost that I got this extra credit card that the bank gave me for whatever reason, but I'll take it. Um, and that extra 5000 off the credit card kind of got me through. And even today, now that you know my credit card balance are all in the zero and you know I've got X num- a massive amount of, of credit available, um, even today after I put in the pin, just out yes. of that, that tumultuous three, six months, comes back to months even, I'm always like, okay, is it approved yet? Is it approved yet? I'm always like staring it down. Even though, again, I've got more than enough cash in my wallet or whatever. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was rough. That was tiring. I even thought about getting a real job. But the idea of getting a real job was just to just the opposite of palpable, so I could never make that happen. How did you pay the loan shark back? I always picture someone like they're going to come at you with like a baseball bat or something. I don't. I know, right? But um, so it was a fifty percent loan. It was fifty percent interest. I ended up paying one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars on a hundred thousand dollar initial. Oh my god! But it was just one of those. I had to do it. Uh, My websites and my domains and all my assets, my digital product was basically used as a collateral. Um, but yeah, you know, I had to do, I was still bringing in revenue. It's not like he stole all my revenue. He stole yeah. revenue that was owed to me. That was, you know, a, a chunk of change, obviously. Right. I think yeah. it was like 350,000 actually. Jeez. Um, so I had expenses to pay, right. That was off the bat. And I couldn't, like, I didn't have that much money sitting around in my bank account. Right. He had always paid me and he'd been a bit late. So I just assumed he would be he'd yeah. paid. It'd be fine. Um, so yeah, I still had revenue and I had yeah. to skip more than I, I mean, again, it's maybe it's a good thing I yeah. had a very minimalistic lifestyle, but I had to skimp a little bit um, and yeah, just slowly, slowly wean it off. So, so it doesn't sound at all like you have bad blood towards a person, like you've forgiven them for it. No, I, I have a, I, <laughs> I should not admit this publicly. Uh, I wouldn't say I've forgiven them, but yeah. I don't think about them. I think that's, yeah. it's, it's happened in the past. You know, eventually I went to a lawyer and he was like, by the time, especially because you're Canadian business, he's American business, by the yeah. time this goes through years, you know, you'll maybe get 20000 yeah. But if you lose, you'll lose much more than 20000 yeah. or 50000 whatever it was. Yeah. And you're just like, well. I say shit. that because some people just focus in on that and they let it consume them. And you seem to be at peace with it. So I'm wondering how you got to that place. Uh, I, I honestly don't even have an answer for that. Yeah. I mean. Uh, we can I mean, uh, maybe you know what it's the pottery I've, just say it's the pottery I've been divorced maybe that's why maybe I've learned to let go of all my anger but it, it's just you know you can't I mean as a business owner you can't be worrying about the past right you can't yeah. be bitter about this opportunity happened or that happened you know you like where is that going to get you yeah and I'm not being like rah rah you know positive thinking or self improvement but it's a reality right if you're yeah. going to run a business you have to be pragmatic you can't be living yeah. in an ideal world or you're going yeah. to fail as a business owner yeah. So on the flip side, Sal, the proudest moment. What's been the proudest moment for you? Uh, proudest moment. Um, hmm, proudest moment. Um, I would say my proudest moment was I bought my my first uh, real paycheck, which was an arbitrary number in my head, uh, but was was five figures. The first five figure paycheck I got, uh, I gave it to my mom, and I basically hmm. bought her 
diamond ring. This was wow. You know, I'd always as a as a kid, I'd always been very mouthy, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna make you proud, blah blah blah. I'm gonna do all this. I'm gonna get you this. I'm gonna get you this. So actually, having a, a check in my mm-hmm. hand or that amount deposited, or, that was a check actually. And mm. then, you know, giving it to my mom. And, and this was very specific for a diamond ring. This was not like for anything else. And this is beyond mm. the idea of diamond rings are rip off or not. But it had been always this thing for my mom. So yeah. to get her this, you know, VVS, like the best one carat yeah. uh, diamond ring was, was kind of awesome. That's amazing. And none of my siblings can say they've done the same. So I can always lord that over them anytime there's any doubt about who's <laughs> the best of them all. Um, mentors. You know, I read that one of your heroes was Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you actually get to work with him. Yeah, so uh, I love reading biographies. There's yeah. my, you know, anytime people ask me what's your favorite self-help book or business book, I say there's not a single one. I always read biographies because you hear about their struggles, you hear about their their turmoil to get where they are, right? Yeah. So Steve Martin, for example, um, in his biography, he talks about how he'd record himself and then he'd listen to himself hour for hours afterwards picking out the littlest nuances and mistakes he had made. Yeah. I can't even imagine listening to this more than once, right? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm tired of my own voice. So I love biography. So Arnold is a great one where, you know, everyone thinks of him as this bodybuilder who then stumbled into acting, who then whatever. But he actually made his first million off real estate, right? right? And he said to himself, and well, I've got my money from real estate. I can do whatever I want. And that whatever I want happened to be acting, right? So that's always been very inspiring. And also, you know, he was an immigrant. Um, he was a fish out of water. Like my first, I came here for high school. I was so uh, just awkward, I think is the right word to use. I was just totally did not fit in. I did not know what was going on. Just massive culture shock. Um, but, you know, he came. He was a fish out of water, but he didn't care. He did what he wanted to do. He worked hard. He made his money. And that allowed him to do whatever he want. And yeah. I've kind of, on a much, much, much smaller scale, I've kind of done the same thing, right? I was a fish yeah. out of water. I did what I wanted to do. I believed in it. People doubted him all the time, right, with his accent yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I made my, my money, and now I get to enjoy life and, and do whatever I want when I want. So yeah. that's always been uh, – uh, I, I, I can only say I haven't had a direct a lot of direct mentors, um, but I've always had uh, these aspirational figures, and reading their stories has always been very yeah. inspiring to me. Yeah. How was it for you, though, that you're an advisor for their fitness site? It's uh, It, it was kind of random. It, w- it was cool. Um it's uh, it, it was very geeky. I think is 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 the right way to say it, right? And, and just being even my random friends noticed it, like, yo, Arnold is following you on Twitter. I'm like, yes, this is true. Or, or I, I do remember in terms of t- uh, tweeting the the last time uh, he tweet or any times he's tweeted me with my my handle in it. Just seeing the tweets that are sent towards Schwarzenegger are hilarious, right? Like. <laughs> they show a part of humanity you would not normally see. I think is the best way to, to phrase it. So it's been just, it's been very cool. I, I think that's yeah. the best way yeah. to sum yeah. it up. Saul, this has been fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm sorry you have an uh, event with your girlfriend because this could go on for another hour. But um, where should we point people towards? Where should they check out online for your your sites and you? And I didn't even get to, to say my, um, uh, my statement about SGO. Because I felt it was re- like I felt it was so interesting when I hit that page, and I had a lot of comments on that. But that's right. for another time. Um, right. Yeah. So yeah. So the, the best your intensity place is- on that page, like people should just check out SGO. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, SJO. dot com. SJO. dot com. It's an yeah. intense page. It's intense. It's, uh, I don't know how I else mean, to describe it. The reality is. Uh, I've tried to keep a relatively low profile, but for especially for examine as its as its star has skyrocketed up, people want to talk about the business side of it, right? So yeah. I've had to talk about the business side because Curtis and Kamal are not we're not in that in that area. Yeah. So you know that's got me in Men's Fitness, got me in, uh, in Forbes and all these other magazines. Yeah. So people have followed me, and there's a bit of a following. Um, so they frequently email me or message me or ask me about entrepreneurship and whatnot right. and the reality is that most people selling entrepreneurship online have never had any success themselves you know people selling passive income how to make passive income websites when they're making three thousand dollars or two thousand dollars a month as their full-time job and they talk about it all the time and again I don't want to be mean but I feel like if you're making under fifty thousand which is not even the median income in Manhattan like you should not be self styling yourself as an expert right I will also be the first person to say I'm not an expert but at least I've had a modicum of success and I have some experience. So SJO.com uh, is just a place for me to not just talk about what yeah. I've learned in entrepreneurship, but research, right? So yeah. to, uh, last week and a half, I've spent about 10, 15 hours researching about topography on websites, 
right? Readability. How what about line height, line spacing, um, you know, different fonts, sans serif versus serif, headlines, all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So it's really a, a repository for me. Will and, and so I got about three to five people a week saying, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? So SJO.com is just an outlet for me to be able to say, hey, yeah. just go look on the website, or hey, you know, this is what my thoughts are on this, or or this is something I think. People are not are thinking about. So yeah, sjo.com to see me. My Facebook's there. My Twitter's there. I'm usually very accessible unless for some reason you do something really idiotic. So yeah, feel free to <laughs> free to say hi or, or anything in between. Examine.com, sjo.com. Saw any final words or lessons that we should leave people with on this uh, entrepreneur I, journey? I, I would just say that just remember what the end goal is. And I personally don't think it should be money. Um, I sh- it should be towards whatever is more important to you, be it a hobby, a lifestyle, traveling, whatever. Aim for that, and once you achieve that, then you know you're kind of where you were trying to go. Instead of just trying to make a a ten million dollar business or a hundred million dollar business or unicorn these days, right, with a billion dollar startups. Yeah. That's that's usually my mo- uh, my advice to entrepreneurs because yeah. most of them don't want to be running a thousand person um, business, right? They want something very specific, the freedom or whatever that they're looking for. So chase that. Don't chase the the money. Yeah, love it. Thanks, Al. Much appreciated. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.